Now this is an 85 millimeter shot. This is a 14 millimeter shot. And this is a 50 millimeter shot. Now let's try that again, but let's put the correct lens in the correct context. This is an 85 millimeter shot. This is that same 14 millimeter shot. And back to the 50 millimeter shot, which as you can tell is very versatile. And now it's time to break it down. Don't, don't, be, don't be laughing at me, bro. Can you dance? What? I, you I, can't. I, I don't really dance. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yo, what's good, you freaking legends? I hope you're doing dope. Today we're out in downtown and it's so freaking loud out here, but I decided to take this time. Can't you see I'm trying to vlog here, bro? So today we're just shooting a little bit of extra bureau for this client that we have. And I thought, yo, why not just bring you along and answer the question that everybody asked me, when to use what lens? Hi, how's it going? <laughs> People are just observing me while I'm vlogging. All right, cool, let's go. So this is going to apply to both your photographers and your filmmakers, okay? Now I'm going to keep it simple, stupid. Get it, it's a, it's a kiss. That's a bar, what the heck is wrong with you guys? Now this is not the end all be all, okay? So for beginners, yo, this is gonna be dope for you, but for the pros, I'm sorry if I'm making it like ultra simple. I'm doing it just so it can be a little bit more digestive for everybody else. Can't you see it? I'm trying to vlog here, bro. So a quick recap for you guys. You got lenses that go from pretty much eight millimeters, which is like your wide GoPro that you're used to seeing, and all the way up to like 400 millimeters, which is basically all of your like, nature, wildlife type of shots, right? Now you may be thinking, bro, why don't you just get like a zoom lens that can do everything or just move further and closer back? I mean, technically you could do that, but in actuality, you're changing the image. You've probably seen like full-time filmmakers like little thing and it just goes forward and backward and it shows like the different focal lengths. That's a really good example. And I'm glad that he did that because now I don't have to do it. All right, so now that we got all the boring stuff out of the way, now let me tell you this, you've pretty much got three types of lenses. You got your wide lenses, ultra versatile medium range, and you also have your telephoto lenses. On top of that, you have your zoom lenses and you have your prime lenses. Zoom lenses can obviously change their focal length. Prime lenses can't do that. Now here's when you want to use zoom lenses. When you're running and gunning. So this includes live events, weddings, like sports, anything where you do not have a lot of time to be changing your lens. Because remember, changing lenses takes time. Don't be that guy that leaves his lenses completely exposed. That yells amateur. Nobody wants to be that guy. Also, don't use a zoom lens if you're shooting low light. Now, I know a lot of you guys are gonna start typing, what the heck did I just, shut up bro, let me speak, all right? Now here's the thing, zoom lenses can only go down to around like f2.8 for the most part, okay? When you shoot with primes, those things go down to f2, 1.8, or even 1.4. You want to get as much light into that sensor as possible. Now, if you're shooting video, I highly suggest not to use zoom lenses because you're probably following the 180 degree shutter rule. So that means you can't move the shutter speed. And on top of that, you don't want to blast your ISO because ISOs are so much more sensitive when it comes to video. Now with photo, it's a lot more forgiving if you're shooting with a zoom lens because you can change your shutter speed, you can put on a tripod, and also ISOs aren't as sensitive as they are in video. So that's just a quick tip. It's kind of assumed, but I gotta repeat it. If you have the time to change from a zoom lens to go to a prime lens, prime lenses are almost always sharper than any zoom lens you got. So if you got that dope prime to put on your sexy body, go bum bum bum. That is all I That's a B2K reference, you know what I mean? Prime lenses allow you to be a lot more intentional than just guessing with the zoom. Johnson, but when do I use the right lens? I'm freaking getting there, bro, chill out. Now the majority of people identify wide lenses as anything wider than 24 millimeters. So anything smaller than the number 24. Use a wide lens if you need to get an establishing shot. Establishing shot is just a fancy word to say everything in relation to one another. Basically just means that you can see everything. I cannot overstate this. For establishing shots, use a wide lens. If you use a telephoto lens, it's gonna look kind of like it did at the beginning. Ain't nobody gonna know where you're at, bro. You also got your landscapes, your cityscapes, inside cars, small places. That's where you use a wide lens, but there is a huge but here. Make sure you don't get too close to your subject's face or any of their body parts, because what's happening is, is you're gonna warp their hands and warp their limbs when they get too close. Now, unless you want that look, hey, yo, do you boo boo, but I just don't suggest it. But unless you want that look, James Matthews is a monster cinematographer and he used a 10 to 18 millimeter on this shoot. Notice that it makes everything just look larger than life. Everything looks just freaking epic, dude. 
Hey, so I see that you uh, you haven't hit that like button, bro. You gonna do it? I mean, you're still here, so. Oh, you ran out of likes? Tyler, these dudes ran out of likes, bro. Likes, not likes, likes. So we're just walking to the next location, but we ran into Josh and Allison right now. I don't know who they are, but they were like, they want to do a photo of them. So we're gonna go all out. We're gonna grab some Nam lights real quick, put them in the middle of the street, couple shot, maybe 85, 55 mil. Be dope, let's go. If all things go accordingly, I'm gonna grab his camera. It's like a potato, I mean Nikon. <laughs> it's like a kit lens. And I'm gonna see if I can get like a dope shot with it. So you want the lovebird special? See a ball, but it's gonna look... Put your hands right in the middle of that line. I want it to be like more natural. Boom, there you go. A foot popping kiss. Oh my God. Yeah, Where's your I'm, gonna the, I'm gonna put the bell on your notification. Dude, hit the bell! Hit the Let's bell. Go. Next, we got telephoto lenses, which is basically anything tighter than 70 millimeters, just like you're seeing right now. This is what gives that expensive, professional bokeh look, you know what I mean? Now, just a quick disclaimer when it comes to shooting on telephoto lenses. It looks really good, it looks expensive, it looks professional, but make sure that you have some time to set up your shot. Because it's a telephoto lens, you're gonna have to walk even further back from your subject, and you're gonna have to take time to set up your shot, and you're gonna have to be yelling across, be like, hey, yo, vato, can you move? And it's gonna be like a big old pain in the butt, you know what I'm saying? But hey, if you're fast, do it fast. That, hey, yo, that's what she said, huh? Yeah? Uh, y'all don't even laugh at me, bro. Y'all literally standing right here. <laughs> I'm only going to say this once. Headshots, 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 and more headshots. Boom! That 70 to 85 or even 100 millimeter, that looks freaking delicious when it comes to any kind of headshot. It looks very flattering, makes everyone look a little bit slimmer because it's compressing everything, meaning it's making everything skinnier. Another time I want to use this is when I want to show details. Logos, clocks, clothing items, objects, product photography, any kind of specific action or expression, this is a perfect time to use a telephoto lens. Just a fun fact, whenever you have a telephoto lens, you don't have to push the aperture down so low because when you're compressing it so much, the background is gonna be blown out anyway. So that makes it so much easier to focus on the only thing that is in focus. Also, bro, if you know you can't get any closer, you're gonna have to use a telephoto lens, like live events or weddings, especially on wide shots. Concerts, recitals, anything like that where you can't get too close to the action. You need to let the lens do the work. That's why when you see National Geographic and Discovery, they always have these telephoto shots because they can't get that close without the animal running away. Oh my gosh, I know I just blew your freaking mind, this is. And if you're shooting people, you can use this uh, however close or however far you want to get. It's going to look good regardless. And that's why you've seen a lot of interviews that use this as a B cam just to cut away and it makes them look really nice. Dang, man. Finally. There you go. You know how to use a telephoto. Let's move on. <laughs> oh. Now, mid-range lenses, bro, these things can pretty much be used anywhere, okay? That's why the majority of people, when they buy lenses, they're buying anything between the 35 millimeter all the way into like the 50 millimeter or so. As far as portraits are concerned, the widest I would go is a 35 millimeter and make sure you're doing like a full body around three quarters or so. Unless you're trying to go that creative route with like some wide shots like I did here, then go for it. But we're trying to keep it simple, okay? Otherwise, you can use these for just about anything. Cars, people, railings, big biceps, shirts, shoes. When in doubt, go the 30 or 50 millimeter route. If you got no lenses and you want to prime, get yourself a 50 mil, you can use it for anything. The only reason I say that is because 50 millimeters is basically the equivalent of what your eyes see. At least that's what they say. I've never tested it, but you know, whatever. Now, I just want you to go and be creative applying these tips and whatnot. And on top of that, go out and get yourself some freaking bangers, just like our sponsor today, which is Cuts Clothing. My guy, everyone knows that you can't take bangers unless you're wearing one of these shirts. Right, Tyler? Right. I told you, everybody knows that. But on the real though, dude, this is literally some of the highest quality material of anything that I've ever worn. You get 15% off, I get a kickback from that. You get some dope stuff, you get to watch free content and they pay for it? Come on, bro. It truly helps me out. So check that link down in the description. But anyway, I think that that is it. Go ahead and like this video and subscribe because that's what all the cool kids are doing. Follow me on Instagram at Keyboard King if you wanna see all the behind the scenes and all of that. Jazz, can we finally go get some Empire Pizza? Do it. My goodness. <laughs>
Dude, it's a sponsor, bro.